Hi, how's it going everyone? It's been a while since I've shown my face here and if you're wondering if there's something different about my room I got the walls painted and got different flooring if you couldn't tell but never mind that not too long ago I uploaded a short film to my channel titled something about obedience it talks about cancel culture and obedience and I'm here today to talk about the short film itself I'm going to be going over the events of the short film, the short film itself, and the idea behind the film. Now, without further ado, let me create my explanation. So this short film was a college assignment that I did for my workshop class. Back in January, our professor told us that we were going to have to do a short film for the class. Now, before I even was in the class, I had a feeling that we were going to have to do a short film. So I wasn't that surprised. However, I was worried about how I was going, going to be able to produce a short film, though. Now, I feel like a very creative person when thinking of an idea for a short film, and videos on YouTube for that matter. I mean, I did work on YouTube, the interactive game, which had me writing dialogue for each character. So pre-production wasn't that big of a problem. So was post-production, since I already know how to edit. Production was the thing that I was most worried about because you must rely on everything going according to plan when you film. I wasn't confident in the production phase because I believed that things could go wrong, and wrong it did. I'll explain what happened in a minute. So for any film out there, you're going to need something called Actors. Now, I personally don't know any actors other than myself and my niece who is training to become one. So, I had to find some actors for my film. Luckily, I found Wesley when I was helping out with a short film for someone else. So, for one of the other assignments that I had to do was be a crew member for a short film made by a student who was in part two of the workshop class. I was chosen to be a gaffer, and for those who don't know, a gaffer is someone who controls the lights on set. I didn't want to be a gaffer though, but I ended up becoming one. I mean, being a gaffer wasn't bad at all, but I wish I was something else. Anyways, in the short film that I was involved in, Wesley was an actor in it. I asked him if he could be an actor in my film, and he agreed. And he gave me his contact info. So I got myself as an actor and Wesley for one too. All I needed was one more actor and I'll be set. I asked Wesley if he knew anyone else that wanted to be an actor in my film. And he gave Zeke my contact info. Now fun fact, Zeke was in a play I went to called A Good Few Men. Which also had my niece in it. The fact that Wesley knew Zeke who acted with a family member of mine, proves it's a small world. After I got my actors, I wrote the script, did the storyboard, got my crew members of my fellow classmates, made an equipment list, made a call timesheet for when everybody has to be on set, and hooks with the actors. At that point, everything was going well for me, and it seemed like nothing can possibly go wrong. So, the short film assignment was due on April 20th, or at least the rough cut of it was. I had a plan to record scene 1 and 3, which was them sitting in the room and talking, on April 3rd, and record scene 2, which was the hallway scene, on April 10th. And we used those two weeks to edit them all together, and used the week that the short film was due to improve the video, and make it more good looking. That was the plan until on the day we had to film scene one and three, Zeke had car trouble. We were planning to film at the college where I am attending and Zeke contacted me beforehand and told me that he hit something on the road that made his car spilled oil. He told me that he may not make it that day and I told him that we will all be there and hope that he will. I came to the college and everyone was there. 
including wrestling. We got the equipment and set everything up. I'd like to mention that the room scene where you see them talking wasn't the room intended for the film. The room that was intended was much bigger and had needed space for us to work with. We waited in that room for Zeke to show up and he then contacted me and said he couldn't make it. And we ended up canceling that day. It sucked, but things like this can happen. I just hope it didn't. Now I have to reschedule scene 1 and 3 for next week along with scene 2. Then came the following week I ran into some more trouble. Some of my classmates couldn't help me because they had to focus on their own short films and the actors said that they had only had a limited time to be on set. So I once again cancelled scene 1 and 3 and only did scene 2 that week. I got scene 2 recorded and edited together that week. But now time was running out for me. I still haven't gotten scene 1 and 3 recorded and I scheduled it for Tuesday of the week that the rough cut was due. Now, I absolutely had no film crew with me when filming scene 1 and 3. So I had to do everything myself. And it was a pain. I had to get and carry all the equipment all by myself. I couldn't film in the room where we were originally going to shoot in because a class was being held in there that day. I was going to film in the library at the college, but it didn't work. Later, I got an office space at the college and we filmed in there. I set up everything by myself with no help at all. I could have asked the actors to help me, but I didn't because it wasn't their job. I feel like they should do their job, which was to act, and I should do mine, which was to do everything else. During the recording process, I got hungry, tired, and feeling a bit weak, and, but I got everything done in the end. After the recording, I let the actors leave and go home, since I'm now done with them, and packed everything up by myself. I was weak and felt fatigued and had a hard time packing all the equipment up by myself and returning it back to the college. I returned home that day, feeling tired. I lay down on my couch and let death take me. I edited everything together in the remaining time that I had and turned in the rough cut before the due date. I also did a fine cut and a final cut and turned those in as well. I was hoping my short film would make it into the video showcase that they did, but it didn't. So yeah, that was everything that happened when making this film. All I have to say is that it was an experience that I had a lot of bad luck in. Now, let's talk about the film itself. In the film, you can spot a lot of errors in it, like the equipment in the background. I removed them later in the film. There were some blurry parts in the film. I didn't have the camera focus in on the subjects too well. I broke the 180 wall. If you don't know what that is, it's where you're supposed to pick one side for your camera to be if your actors are looking at each other and not to cross it. I crossed that line when it switches from Zeke to Wesley. In the short film, Wesley says, Obediences. That was a spelling error in the script and he ended up saying that error in the film, so it isn't his fault for saying that. It's technically my fault because I wrote the script. I'm not going to list all the rest of the errors in the film, but if you yourself spot some, then feel free to comment about those errors. Now let's talk about other things. The characters that both Wesley and Zeke plays are named John and Chaston, which are named after the characters in YouTube throughout the game. I even put promotional material in the film when the newspaper was shown on Wesley's phone. In the hallway scene, you can see the odor and stains on Wesley's shirt when he puts his hands up in the air. That was unintentional. I didn't even notice that until I edited the film. But it adds so much impact to the scene since he's supposed to be afraid and show fear. Major props to him for doing that, even though it wasn't intentional. The gun that I used was a Nintendo Zapper. You know, the toy gun that was used to play NES games like Duck Hunt. I didn't want to use a realistic one because we were in college and I didn't want to freak nor scare anyone. 
I remember that time we got in trouble for using a realistic fake gun and the cops came to the college. Never again. The part when Wesley was doing various dances was supposed to be references to actual dances. The first dance was supposed to be him doing the Spider-Man dance from Spider-Man 3. The second one was the Spooky Month dance from Senior Pelo Spooky Month. And the third one was the dance that the girl from the High Time does. He couldn't do those dances correctly, but I give him points for at least trying though. I think that's everything I want to talk about with the film itself. Now let's get serious for a moment and talk about the idea behind the film. The idea behind this film is supposed to talk about cancel culture and obedience towards the law and anything else that people obey. The idea is supposed to be based on some thoughts I have about cancel culture itself. Back in 2020, so many people got canceled because of something bad that they did in the past or something recent. Even people that I look up to got canceled because they broke the law or something else that they did. People like Trudeau Mark, Mean Lad, and so many others. Now, to be fair, what they did was truly awful, and I believe that there should be some type of punishment for what they did. But I don't believe that they're bad people. Anyways, I start to wonder why people cancel each other on social media. Then it hit me. I think it has something to do with the law, as in maybe people do it because it makes them a good person for it. I started to question if it's necessary at all for people to cancel each other because I feel like people do it just so that the law doesn't see them as bad people and put them in jail or worse. I see cancel culture as people looking down on someone and giving up on them even if it's their favorite person. I think nobody truly wants to cancel anyone and they just do it due to fear that the law will do something bad to them. To be honest, if that's the reason why they do it, then I don't think that makes them the type of person that they are. I feel like people shouldn't treat themselves as good people with fear as the reason why they do things. It's like you're doing it because you're aware of the consequences and that can be the only reason why you're doing it. You probably don't want to do what you must do and that's the thing. I discovered that people could do things due to two reasons. They either do an action due to fear or they can do it for a desire. If someone does something due to fear then they probably doing it because something bad will happen to them and probably nothing else. Like people need to pay their bills, house payments, or rent because they need a place to live and that can be taken away by a landlord, a utility company, or any other type of creditor. It's like they're paying someone who has a gun pointed at them, but instead of taking away their lives, they can take away the things that they need for their lives. That is why people get jobs so they can be able to pay them. Now, getting a job is something people, including myself, should do, but it may not be anyone's desire unless it's their dream job or something. However, if someone does something due to a desire, then they must really care for what they do. It's like they do it because they love it, to their heart's content, and not because they have to. They can have no reason to do something other than they want to. And I think that can truly determine if they're a good person or not. Sometimes people can do good things due to fear and not because they want to. Like maybe following the law. I don't think a law by a citizen can possibly be a good person. For all we know, they would want to disobey the law if they could, but don't due to there being consequences. That's like saying, if it weren't for the laws of this land, I would slaughter you. This is why I'm led to believe that nobody that follows the law is a good person. I mean, they're not a bad person, I just think they're neutral, which is at least good in my book. I can assume and hope that they can be good, but I can't be 100% sure that they are, even if they are obeying the law. The same thing can go for if they disobey the law and that they are a bad person. I don't think people are bad even if they disobey the law. 
as long as they didn't have a desire to do it. Like, they could do something wrong because of fear. Like, they steal to get money or put food in their mouths. It's not right, but I might find it understandable if they explain the reasons. All I'm trying to say is that I don't qualify obeying the law as an act of good or what makes a person good since they may obey it due to there being something bad happening to them if they don't. I mean, it's okay to let fear make you do things, I guess, but I wouldn't think of you as a good person because of it. Every time I see someone get canceled on social media, I don't look down nor give up on the person. I will be disappointed and criticize them, however, but I will never truly give up on them unless they had a desire to do the bad thing that they did. And I believe that everyone on social media should do the same, not give up on a favorite person. Social media can be a tough place sometimes, so I can suggest getting off it at times. I would like to go on record and say that being disciplined isn't going to stop you from doing bad things. People will continue to do bad things regardless if they know what's right and what's wrong. It's inevitable. The best thing that discipline is going to do is give you a desire to not want to do bad. The purpose of this short film was to prove a point to people watching it. That point being that obedience does not make you a good person whatsoever. Uh, now we're all that settled, I can finally end the video. So yeah, making this short film was a pain. Will I do this again? Well, I'm going to have to for next semester, and I need to make two short films. However, I may already have an idea for the next short film or two I'll do. I'd like to thank some of my crew members for helping me, and Richley and Zeke for being actors in it. They're wonderful actors, and I will definitely use them again if they're down for it. That's it. Goodbye, and create your victory. Let's say you're walking and minding your own business until suddenly...